Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I am Rob, and today I shall be attempting to take this Tomika Dodge Coronet Custom from shabby to shiny. Uh, not just shiny, but we're going to modify this one. It's going to be a Minnesota State Police car, and this one is a commission job today. It's part of, I guess you could say it's a part two of a commission for Grant over in the USA. If you remember of a couple of months ago now, I did a couple of these, these uh, Tomika Dodge Coronets in the Hazard County Sheriff car. But yeah, this is going to be the Minnesota uh, State Police Patrol cars and uh, very cool. And I've been looking forward, really looking forward to doing these ones, uh, but just been kind of collecting the little parts and decals and, the, you know, the all the little bits that are really needed to make this look as close as possible as I can anyway, uh, to make this look like this patrol car. But uh, we shall start by taking this thing apart. Of course, we will drill down the center of the post. There is just one on this car. Remove that flange. And tap that hole. Please do remember to lubricate the end of your piece. You do not want to snap it. But yeah, so here is the little car in question. As you can see, a beautiful yellow color but uh, it used to be a taxi and uh, we've retired it and put it into law enforcement but yeah it does read underneath Tomika uh, made in Japan Dodge Coronet Custom uh, 1976 and as you can see here I have already pre-drilled this one so this one's got the opening doors But yeah, a couple of the holes in the top here where the uh, taxi sign would have been and a little bit of uh, sticky residue on those doors there where the uh, the taxi sticker would have been. But of course, we're not doing just one car today. There is a pair and that's the, uh, I guess you could say this is a slightly better car of the two. Um, this one of course is already pre-drilled. What I did is I took one apart just to get a set of wheels that would fit and uh, of course we got two sets here and I wanted to uh, to show one in the of course the opening and uh, yeah this one you can actually have that uh, taxi sign and sign on the door so we'll take out these wheels here of course they won't uh, be used today But we've got a couple of uh, shafts which we've had to shorten and they're well, this is a, a green light and they just don't fit in this uh, original casting so I use my tiny uh, what was it 1.6 millimeter uh, drill bit and then what I'll do is just uh, open up a little channel for these uh, kind of wheels to fit um, they're also just that little bit too wide as you can see here there's a couple of millimeter like spacer on these wheels and then as an example I've had to uh, trim that off just with a Stanley blade or exacto knife I think you call it in America make these wheels flush and then that's the perfect amount. There you go. There's my uh, what I would call a Stanley blade. Very sharp, so I'll do that off camera. And then eventually, you've got all four wheels in. Now this has the kind of original suspension, but it was pushing against the the axles a bit too much. It was too strong, and it weren't much of a roller. But uh, yeah, kind of bend it up a little bit, and there it uh, it rolls fine. But the interior here, pretty basic. But I'm assuming police cars in the 70s would have been a very basic interior anyway. But we take the doors out here.
and then there's a a retaining spring and oh that's a front end as well pops out that's quite a nice little feature that, that pops out quite nice and easy and uh, we can take off the old chrome and re-chrome that later on but yeah using my screwdriver there to pop off the little spring that holds the doors in position And then thankfully the interior glass section just pops out. And there's no cracks or scratches or deep gouges in this, so these will polish out nicely later on. But of course we are missing one uh, taxi sign uh, but we do have the taxi sign on this one and it looks like the method that they've used is pushing it in position and then kind of melting it out just so that it you know it stays uh, stays put but I want I don't want to kind of wreck this because you know I could use this for another custom in the future so I wanted to try and <laughs> this is a very sharp knife and you know, even watching it now, when I was doing it, of course, I was trying to be as cautious as possible uh, because I know these are super sharp and, you know, trying to do the whole you know, cut it away from your method uh, so as not to actually cut my finger. But I think I eventually whipped it off the, that kind of rolled over post bit or melted flange and then just using the screwdriver here to uh, pop it through and thankfully we've got it intact so we'll be able to use that for another little project in the future but yeah let's gather up what is needed for the next stage not forgetting the uh, four little doors and uh, we get it into the foot long hot dog jar covered in boiling water and then in comes a tablespoon of caustic soda So we put that to one side whilst it does its business and it was probably I want to say 10 or 15 minutes as I was doing other little bits and pieces but uh, we don't have unfortunately a 100% paint removal today we've got pretty close I'm gonna say it's around about a 97.4% probably very similar on both castings Uh, three of the doors we have the majority of paint gone again although this one in particular who knows why but uh, yeah that decided to kind of stay in and uh, I didn't show it actually but I popped in the uh, two front ends there just as I was uh, just a kind of seconds really before pouring it down the sink just give it a few seconds and that chrome paint comes off in the caustic solution But using my Dremel now to polish up the, I think I'm going to do the bonnet and the roof section. Shiny, so all I'm going to need to do now is 
do it all over. And there's a little comparison kind of before and after. Quite nice to have a pair just to uh, make those comparisons. And of course, uh, 10 minutes later and both are done. And Same with all the doors there. And then I've done one of the bases. And again, nice to see a difference between the before and after. So I'll get on with the uh, second one here now. But we are now starting to lay down some paint. So using the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in white. We got uh, the first casting here. doesn't it look good in white of course the other two are in white so stick around to the end of the video and I'll show all four cars together but anyway we've got the uh, the eight wheels here and just gonna simply cover them over with the uh, primer these will be getting the body color as well shortly along with some re-chrome center hubs now the colour, I have gone with a, you could say probably 95% of that is red. There's a little splash of blue, and then just a dash of yellow. And uh, maroon is the colour that I was aiming for. The uh, Minnesota State patrol cars have been using this same colour for a long time that I can see doing some uh, Google research I can see the same kind of colour combination with the maroon and you know the white door on the side going back at least 50 years and it's certainly still used today I think the only difference I can really see is that it's probably more of a metallic maroon today but this one here back in the 70s would have been more of a solid colour and that's certainly what I've uh, tried to achieve now there are so many different kind of light bars and you know different uh, bits and pieces that were on the top of these police cars but this seems to be the closest that I can find the only difference of course is that the one I bought was or it had blue lights but the pictures that I've got that Grant has sent and I've done my own research they show him red so I chopped them off I initially wanted to go with these LEDs but they just didn't work out they were too small but yeah I actually used uh, a UV glue and then uh, used the uh, candy paint to uh, paint over it and I think they look pretty good but uh, we'll move on to uh, cleaning up the interior and the uh, interior glass here I've given this a little polish and that looks as good as new and the interior here will be getting a uh, a black matte makeover the other two cars that uh, Grant has that's got a white interior or like a cream interior doing a little bit of research on the kind of color interior for the Minnesota cars they seem to be black or gray so I'm not too sure whether the bright red would have suited but I think this was uh, a good call but anyway it's the following day now so we've got these uh, wheels I'd say they're now in body color with uh, chrome accents there the uh, front grills there re-chromed and painted in just another little showing of that uh, window section there the polished out base and I've chromed out the uh, the rear bumper and painted in the rear lights and then the maroon here obviously with a, a touch of gloss 
and you can see the light bar there using the original holes to kind of use the UV glue to keep them in position and of course you've got the door uh, now with a decal I've got these decals actually from uh, Sideways King 75 um, this is really you know I've had these decals for probably I don't know how long over six months and uh, before he even kind of done his thing so you know ask him if he would do them but I'm not too sure but anyway this is now the final result I think this is a beauty and it is certainly one of my favorites that I've ever done um, you know it's had a lot of work put into this one the color coded wheels there of course the different colored door with a different decal on the side all that chrome work the light bar on the top you know painting in those uh, rear tail lights there so Grant I hope you like this one mate I know it's been a long time coming you've certainly been very patient So I appreciate that. And uh, all four cars will be coming over to you shortly. But uh, for everybody else, please like the video. I hope you like it. Stick around to the end of it because I'm going to show all four cars of this commission um, together. But let me take this opportunity to thank my amazing patrons. Cheers, guys. And for everybody else who's watched it, hopefully you like this one. And hopefully you'll stick around to the next.